Hi, this is Pat Kahn, and I am interviewing, and I'm blanking on your name, James Burks, uh, who is in Artist Alley here at the American Library Association Annual Conference in Anaheim, California. Uh, Artist Alley, we have a lot of fun, interesting people, and we're going to be asking a few questions here. So James, how did you get started in working in comics? Well, I started out in animation, and I did that for 15 years, and then I started doing comics just on my own time at night as a way to creatively express myself, and I was going to Comic-Con and self-publishing my comics and selling them at Comic-Con, and that's where I met a literary agent who then liked what I was doing, and I started working with her, which translated into getting into publishing and getting my graphic novel published through Yen Press, which is Gabby and Gator, was my first book. I've since done some picture books, and then I have a new book coming out in September, from, or not some, uh, from in August from Scholastic. So and that's called Bird and Squirrel on the Run. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. And um, so you told us about your new project there. Do you have anything else that's uh, in the works that you can talk about at all? Uh, I have a book that comes out next summer that I didn't write but I illustrated. It's called The Mon Store. It's a picture book about a little boy that, or it's about a store that sells monsters and a little boy buys these monsters to keep his sister out of his room. But each, it doesn't work so he goes back to get another one but the store has a policy which is no exchanges, no returns, no exceptions and so he ends up buying another one and that one doesn't work and he buys mm -hmm. another and another and another and then just chaos ensues. So it should be a fun book, and it comes out next summer from Simon & Schuster. Oh, okay. Now, how have libraries uh, affected you in both your younger life and um, with uh, what you do with comics? I think they, you know, I always, I have a love of books, so I love to go places where there are lots of books, and just to be able to find things that I haven't heard of in a library or in a bookstore. It's, it's, you know, it's the act of discovery, I think, that's exciting to me. It's finding books that you may not have seen and escaping into worlds that you've never been to inside of a book. And so I think the library definitely provides that as a place to, to be exposed to lots of different kinds of literature, comics. So. Okay. Now, is there any other comic not written or illustrated by you that you would recommend to a reader? For me, like, I personally um, grew up more like on Peanuts, the comic strip, and so like I would recommend early Peanuts stuff to anybody, and they now have those big collections, which are great. Um, other than that, like Doug Tenapel, I like what he does, a lot of great art and that. Because I tend to focus more on the art side of things than necessarily writing, but so if the book is illustrated really well, then I will pick up the book and read it. So like the Amulet series I think is great. Um, I'm trying to think of one that I really like lately. Oh, Anya's Ghost, I think, by Vera Goss something. Brosco. Brosco, yeah. yeah, that one is a great book. It's a great story. I think first, second, the publisher does a lot of like amazing books that have really good stories in them. So. Mm. Now, what one piece of advice would you give if someone came up to you and said that he or she would want to get into uh, creating comics? It would probably be to want to draw all the time, like if you want to draw comics, you know, it's obviously to draw everything you see and draw constantly. But in terms of writing, it's just, I struggle with this, but not to tell yourself no about anything, just like to start and just go, you know, because a lot of people want to do comics, but they never get past that stage of wanting to do it. It's like, you don't need a special tools or, you know, you just need to do it. So whether you're good or not, just make your comics remake your comics, come up with new ideas, keep making comics, and eventually you're going to get to a place where you're making really great stuff that you're happy with, and then hopefully other people will want to see it, and then you'll you'll get to a much bigger audience. And, you know, it's just about being creative, so just put yourself out there, and, and hopefully great things will come. Yeah, now I'm going to probably put you on the spot with this one, but um, 
what would you like libraries to do for comics that you don't see them doing yet? Uh, well, I think libraries is a good place where people could gather and you could have, you know, which they might do this already, not in the town that I live, but have like graphic novelists or comic artists come in and do workshops with the kids and expose kids to comics, especially graphic novels, because I think graphic novels are a great way for kids to get into reading bigger books and to tell stories and tell their own stories even, and I think the library is a good place for that to happen, where kids can come in, they can meet real artists or real graphic novelists, and they can see that it's something that they can do. So I think as a kid, like I never realized you could make a living or you could do stuff like this professionally or even. It's just like, oh, this is a hobby, you, know, you do it as a hobby, but that you can actually do this and you can make money and you can be successful. It's a lot of work, but it's possible.